Hi crocheters, Crafty Crystal here. I have a Celtic knot bed tile that I adapted from a Yarnspiration pattern which was a Celtic dish towel, dish rag. And uh, I'm going to put the link for the Yarnspiration pattern as well as a video that Mikey from Crochet Crowd did on the Celtic horse rag. I had to make some adaptations because the Celtic rag is very open, loose, like you expect a rag to be when you're just trying to get around your dishes. I wanted something more stick together and I made some changes and have that adaptations. Um, the Celtic rag was bunched up in the middle in fact, the original uh, pattern on Yarnspiration shows one of these whole things folding over both of this. Not a true Celtic knot. Um, Mikey does both the true to the pattern one and he does an alternative where he shows you how to weave it in. What I wanted to do was take the bunching out by evening it out. So from here to here is the same amount of stitches as from here to there. Instead of having on the um, rag pattern, you have nine stitches between here and here, nine between here and here, but you still have 44 stitches. So that gives you 20 and 24. If you bring it back into balance so that you have the same on the bottom as on the top, you don't have this bunching problem. So that was the first change I made. Um, second change I made was I wanted to um, attach these in the middle. Make it more connected, more hold together-ish. Then I added these on. And um, let's see. What else? Oh, uh, I like to connect these on the back two stitches so that you see the ridges. And I like to connect these on the inside of both stitches, of both pieces. So that whether front or back, you can see the ridge on it. Anyway, um, enjoyed making this. It was quite an adventure. I have two different ways to seam it. This is uh, using a barred slip stitch around the outside and connecting it together with a slip stitch crochet hook. And this is using a uh, having the piece face away from you while you make a slip stitch along the back loop. And then when you seam those together you end up with this very tight in fact even tighter connection both of them are pretty invisible you don't really see it here's one I did between here and here see that this is the um, backward slip stitch this is the barred slip stitch and you can't really see the seam that well and the seam is made with a totally different color material. So anyway I had fun doing this and I wanted to share it with you and videos is my way to share so let's get going. This is a this pattern today was made with Red Heart Super Saver 7 ounce skeins and um, I like these pointy type hooks especially if I'm going to be doing a uh, uh, slipping behind stitches and stuff and this is a H hook 5 millimeter H hook all right I've got my worsted weight yarn I've got my H hook and I started with a chain of 20 every ring is a chain of 20 okay so all you want to do is you want to bring it around and connect to your last, your first stitch. 
with a slip stitch. Slip stitch is where you pull through and through. Okay, now grab your tail and we want to chain three. And we're going to do a double crochet. So it's yarn over, down through the loop, bring up a loop, yarn over through two, yarn over through two. That's your double. Yarn over, back down, covering your tail, through two, and through two. Now at this point, tug on your tail a little bit and bring these guys over against your first chain. Okay? Like that. And you're going to continue on doing double crochets down into the ring. And after about, oh, six or seven stitches, you can drop the tail. And that'll be the point at which you can go back if you want to when you go to weave your tail thin. Okay. Now you need a total. Okay, that's enough. You need a total of 44 double crochets. And your chain 3 counts as 1. So you want to go ahead and keep double crocheting around. Um, don't You don't really have to count until you get to the end. Because you'll be pretty close. You'll probably be within about four. Uh, anywhere from over two to under four. When you get there. So go on around and meet me over here. And I'll tell you what to do next. Okay. you got 44 in the ring. And you want to go through and kind of smooth them out. Make sure they aren't bunched anywhere. Because you can get some really quirky looking rings when they're all bunched in the wrong way. Okay. Now, before you connect it together, because it makes it easier to do this way, I want you to put some markers in. So we have, this is one, chain three is one. This is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. You want to stick a little marker through there. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I'm going to put a different color marker in because this is going to be the corner of the four rings. So I mark my corners in a different color. Now we're going to do 11 again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Now we can finish. Now to close this without a real noticeable seam or a real noticeable bunch, you have your chain three. And this is the top of your chain three. This is the top of your very next stitch. What I do is I go through the top of the neck the back of the top of the next stitch. And I come around and I sneak in through the back of that third chain on the chain three. And I pull it through both of those. There you go. See? Hardly noticeable. Okay. And I'm going to take my 
needle and put my pieces in. Because after these are all together, it's going to be very hard to put your piece, get your uh, tails tucked in. I'm opening this up a little bit so I can get to this chain. And every time you come in here to go through the chain to tie any tail, you only want to go through one strand. Otherwise, it's like sliding down a pole. You just, it doesn't hold it. Okay. Make sure that's hidden. That's hidden. And this guy. You notice I'm on the back. Try to hold this up here where you can see it. You want to go under any strands you can so that nobody sees what you're doing back here. This is supposed to be, you know, a nice little sneaky trick. It can't be sneaky if everybody sees it. So just pull that out, make sure it's not scrunching down. Okay. Then where you came out, again, you want to open it up where you can get at the chain. Go through a strand of that chain. And sneak back in the other direction. I usually go past the junction where I came in. Now, if you notice, here's the junction, and we've got one clear down here, and one up here. It's kind of cockeyed. It's got a good reason for that, and I'll explain that in a minute. Right now, we want to set Set this down and start our second chain, our second ring. So again, chain of 20. And every single time you want to bring the tail up through the ring you just did. Do it the same way every time. The reason is when you bring your tail up and connect it, Get out of the way. There we go. You will be crocheting towards the ring you just did. And that means that that ring that you're making is going to be right side up to the ring that you're working on, you're adding to. So you have your ring right side up, you bring the tail up through, connect, and you crochet towards it. Okay? Just let you do this just exactly the way you did the first one. The chain three. Hold your tail. Do your double crochets. And after your first one or two, I'm going to pull that tail and snug those in. See how they're out here? Just take and snug them in a little bit. See? Then go ahead and complete your second ring. And then we'll come back and we'll mark it. And we're going to connect them. So make your second ring. Do your markings. 14, 14 first, going in the direction you crocheted, count 14, and then 11, and 11, 14, 11, 11, okay? 
And here we have our two rings. You can see these are going to be the corners. Okay. And they've been counted and marked. I'm going to connect them together. Again, this is your top of your chain three. This is the top of your second stitch. You go in the back top of your second stitch, and then you sneak back and go into the top of your chain. And you have a very nice looking attachment there. Now I'm going to um, weave that in later. Right now I'm going to show you what we're going to do with our little tags that we stuck on. We want to connect them. You take your bottom ring and you want to go through the top of your uh, outside and the next strand under it. And you want to come up here on the underside of the top ring. And you want to go through the back of the outside loops and the one behind it. Now you see here I have two top loops, two bottom loops. We're going to pull this through those just like that. Top. The bottom one has the two inside top strands. The top one has the two inside bottom strands. Okay. Now the reason why I go to the trouble of doing this now is because that's where I want to connect to on my next round and this way when I'm going around on my next row all I have to do is loosen this and just slide my hook right along the line here pull my loop through and I'm done okay now go ahead and grab your next uh, ring your next loop you bring it up through the last one you did And you work towards your loops, okay? Same way as you did your first loop and your second loop. Okay. So, you have all three loops together. And you connect your second, you connect your third ring to your second ring, just like you did your first and second. And now you have three rings together. Connected, right side up, got your corners, you have one corner missing, I didn't tie that one, there we go, now the last one is a little bit different, because the last one we have to weave in. So we take the tail. Now this is the first ring we did, the second ring, and the third ring. And we're going to weave this in. And I've done this several times now. And sometimes this center gets so messed up that I spend five minutes trying to undo it. So you either take a scrap of yarn and your needle and go through here and secure the center. Or you take a couple of these, a couple of pins, and just skewer them together. Because these can get so turned upside down, backwards, and inside out, it's unbelievable. You spend 
forever trying to get them back together again. And that will solve that problem. Okay, now, so first ring, second ring, third ring. We're going to go up to the last ring we did. Same as we did when we did the second and the third. Now we're going to go underneath. We're going to slip down the side again, and we're going to come up through the first. So we go up through the third, we go down so that we can come up through the first. Okay. And then we're going to connect them. And this looks like an impossible task. Because it seems... We'll go in there, baby. There you go. It seems like you won't have any room to work. But it is very surprising how easy it actually is. So go ahead. Just ignore the other rings. Grab the tail. Do your chain three. You actually end up kind of working off the back of the pieces. And start your doubles. Tuck this down. And go on and finish. You will want to, um, before you, before <laughs> Before you, uh, oh, I've got a cat meowing over here. What? Now, I don't know if you can see just how much this got messed up. If these weren't connected together, it would be very, very messed up. Don't forget to, uh, when you get around to the end, okay, go ahead and cut off a generous tail before you connect it. So it's easier to turn around and put your little tags on. Uh, otherwise, you end up dragging your whole tail through there. Okay. And when you're done, go ahead and connect it just like you did these two. Connect it over here. And we'll be ready to do the outside. Okay? Now remember how odd it seemed that we started off with 14 chains instead of 11 to make our markers. I want you to look at something real close. Do you see the connection anywhere around here? Can you see any of these connections? Do you know why? They're all hiding under each other. This connection is hiding under here. And this connection is hiding under here. And this connection is hiding under here. See? That's why the offset. Instead of having a gap here or a gap somewhere where you can see it, they're all hidden underneath. Okay, now we're ready to put our next layers on. You want to start in a corner. Before you start, go around and loosen up your knots. So it's something you can just, you know, flick your, your um, hook under and take off. Makes it a lot easier. Okay, now in the corner you want to go through the outside loop plus the loop in back of it. Pull up your loop. There we go. Now this loop here on the hook counts as your um, chain one for a single crochet. Now you're going to chain two. And you're going to go back into there, 
under those same two lines. Whoops. Wrapped. Under the same two lines, pull up a loop and do a single crochet. So you have your single crochet, your chain two space, and this back loop here that's going to be your uh, connection for your next single crochet, your last one. Now you need to chain nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And remember the trouble we went to with these two guys to make sure that they were connected properly? And watch how easy this is. Slip it under there. Follow those two out. Bring it through. Oops. Well, it's easy when you don't hook your, get your hook stuck in your thread, huh? Well, I kind of botched that one up a little bit. I'll show you on the next one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and we're at a corner. I'm going to go through those two threads. Pull up a loop, do your single, chain two, go back under those same two threads, pull up a loop, and do your second single. So in the same two threads you have a single, chain two, single, chain nine, Nine. Let's see if we can do this one a little bit better. Uh, pull them over here to the side. Stick this your thing under these two loops. Follow your cord under these two loops. Some way. There we go. Pull that out. Do your single crochet there. See? And go ahead and do that again. Every corner gets your single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Follow your loops you did in your connections. On the, then the corner connection and come back to the corner and I'll meet you here. <coughs> okay, back at the corner. I have my first stitch belongs to this single crochet. I have my chain two. I have this little stitch down in here. So I'm going to go through. See if you can see this. This stitch belongs to my single. This is my second chain. This is my first chain. Go through the first chain down into that loop, the first loop, and slip stitch into it. Okay, so single, chain two, single. All right, 
and we're going to come back down to this chain two space and we're going to do a slip stitch. Now we're going to chain two, not three, two. We're going to do half double crochets now. Yarn over, go back into the two, chain two space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. That's your half double crochet. Chain two, yarn over, go back into the same chain two space, yarn over through all three stitches, loops, and once more. Okay, so we've got the chain, the two half double crochets, chain two, two half double crochets. Now we're going to go right into this single crochet stitch. For another half double crochet. All right, now we're going to do my tail sticking in there. We're going to do four half double crochets. Two, three, four, and then yarn over and count one two, three, four, five, and you want to go through that and the loop behind it. See there? Two loops unhook. And you bring your yarn up so that your crochet hook is laying on top of your chain on top of your work. That makes it plenty loose enough and finish your half double crochet. And do four more. Two, three, four. Then we're going to go into the single crochet. Four half double crochets. Three, four, and yarn over and counting from the point again. Now, not from the last contact, from the point. One, two, three, four, five. And we're going to go through both of the back loops again. Bring it up so your loop is hanging, your hook is laying above the chain. Yarn over through all three. Okay, and another four, two, three, four. And now we're going to do a half double crochet into this first single. Two half doubles into the chain two space. Then another two chains. And two more half doubles into that same chain two space. Now we're going to do a half double into the single crochet. And then we're back to doing our sides just like that one. Four double crochets. Always count from the point, whether you're going towards it or coming away from it. You count from the point. Because remember, this is 10 crochets here. And if you count from one direction one time and one the other, you're going to have six and, f and f five, six and four or, you know, Anyway, it gets messed up. You'll have six and four one way and then six and four the other. Just count five up every time from the point to put your half double crochet. Okay? Now, you come back around. You want to make sure that you don't forget 
So you have to go into that first single crochet before you latch on. So I have one, two, three. Here's my fourth half double crochet. And then half double crochet into that single. Okay. Now here's my second half double crochet of the bunch. Here's my initial chain two. I'm going to go into the top of that one and back up and go into the top of the chain two. Like so. Okay. Okay. So that's what it looks like after you have your next row done. Now we're going to go right into the barred slip stitch. The barred slip stitch is worked with the front facing you. I'm going to chain one to start. That gives me a good place to stop at the end. And you don't want to use the front rows, you want to use the back loop. That gives you a nice border across the front. So you go in, you You come behind your thread and you come in front and go into that back loop. Hold the little thread and pull through and through. We're in the corner here. In the corner you have this stitch that goes with the next half double, the two chain twos, and right now I'm in the one that goes with the second half double. So I'm going to bar slip stitch into that first chain. Then I'm going to chain two, and I'm going to bar slip stitch into the second chain. And then I'm on my way again. Okay. See, you can get so mixed up on the corners. This looks like it's part of the chain two space, but this is latching onto your column. So this actually goes with the column, not with the slip stitches. And that's what I had to stop and look at. Because it was tight enough here, I wasn't sure whether that was the loop I was in or not. So drag forward, go through the loop, pull it up and up. <laughs> well, yeah, you actually have to pull something up. There we go. Now you notice when you go down in the back to do your slip stitch, how it makes this lay down. Your hook is actually pushing the thread down. That's when you grab the bar and it makes it easy to pull your loop up and up. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's drag, under, grab, pull up and up. Drag, Grab, drag, grab, there we go, doesn't take very long, bring it down where you can see it. You have a nice distinctive edge here, and it's a straight edge, can you see that? It's not slanting towards you, see how the part that you normally make slants towards you. So when you look at it like this, it's like a point on top with the front of the stitch showing. Your barred slip stitch is like this. It's flatter on top. Okay. Gives you a, a better budding service. Now the front edge on a barred slip stitch is actually just a little bit higher. Not much, just a little bit higher than the back. You can see that. 
See the difference between the edge of a barred slip stitch and the edge of a regular seam? See there? Okay. Now, through on the front. Come back around. We had the uh, extra stitch. The little extra loop you went. So you want to find, here's your first column. Here's your next stitch. You want to slip stitch into the top of that. And take the time to look at this. You have your chain two space. You have your chain for your space. You have this loop for this column. You have this loop for this column. And you're going to have this loop for this column. So this little loop here and this loop here on either side of your knot. You're going to remember that when you're connecting them. This loop belongs to a column. This loop belongs to a column. And you have your knot in between. Okay? Very important. Now, if you don't want to put these little goodies in, you don't need to listen to this next part. If you want to add these, this is how we're going to do it. You need to make eight little pieces like this for each square. You need a good long tail. And you count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Leave a long tail. Snip and pull. So you actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, and the seventh becomes part of the knot. Let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, snip, pull. There you go. Now, it's going to be important for you to have them be the same length. If you do a real loose one and you end up with one up here like this, let's see which way am I? And go back and just back off. There. Now this one only has one, two, three, four, five in the knot, but it was a much looser um, chain. We want the same length, okay? Now, to do these, you want to start from the back. And you're going to use your needle. You're on the back, you take your piece, thread it, and you want to come down the first or second stitch below where it crosses. You want to go through the two back lines. That's 
I gotta stay true to myself. I need to start on this side. I'm gonna go to the two black lines right here. And I want to go through the back bump. So the flaps on the other side. And pull it up tight. And weave it in. I'll finish that later. I don't want to spend a lot of time doing the weaving because we've done all of that. Okay. Now on the bottom, you know this is the fifth stitch because this is where we connect it at. So you come right next to it and you slide down because you want the fourth from the bottom. You go in here and you catch well, let's catch a whole thread, Bella. I'm going to catch a thread of that chain. And make sure your chain's not twisted here. So you still have the back. Come to the back of your knot. And tie it in. Cover your little holes. Okay. Now, on your second one, When to come across from where you were before so that they're right opposite each other. Go through the back. And leave it in. I'll finish that one later as well. Now, if you do the same side every time, like I like to do the same side every time. I always do the left, this side. Then you take your tail and just like you're used to doing all the other times, you bring it up under, just like you did in all your rings, up and under. And all your twists will be in the same direction every time. You won't have some twisting this way and some twisting that way. Okay. And then just go back. Find your fifth stitch. Come one over. And go into your chain. And I'll go ahead and finish that after. And there you have it. That's how you do your little middle chains. Now, we've done our barred slip stitch. And now we're going to connect them together. So you take the face. I'll do it that way face to face like that and we're going to seam it using our hook and a slip stitch go through there find the corresponding one on the other side 
This one belongs to the slip stitch. That's a chain. That's a chain. That one belongs to the bar. So we go into the outside. Go to the outside. That's the back. Where are you? Pull your loop through both. I'm going to pull my loop through both tail and feed through. Now, you're going to go through the side facing you, skip over, I'm going to make sure I'm not losing here. Okay, go over to the far side and pull your slip knot. Near side, far side, slip knot. Near side, far side, slip knot. Near side. I had a stretch of yarn that wasn't really good. And that's where I have my little shovel here. The loops don't look quite right. Okay, near. Far. Through. Near. Far. Through. All you have to do when you do slip notches, slip knots. Stitches. Make sure when you pull through, you pull up a little bit so that your slip stitch will be as long as the stitches you're doing it to. Then it doesn't bunch. Oh. And there you have it. It has a pretty low profile this way and there's your front see there's where I had my split threads now you can spread this and see the bottom but it tends to want to pop right back together again see that very nice that gives you a very distinct edging around your project especially if you used an alternate color you could have like the darker color for your borders now You can also use a slip stitch, a regular slip stitch instead of a barred one. But to do the regular slip stitch and make your invisible seam, you have to do from the back of your fabric. So you have your square and this is the back of the square. That's the front, this is the back. And for the back of the square, you want to sneak up on the back loop this way and do your regular slip stitches. I've gone uh, all the way around this and I'll be undoing all of it because I want it to be barred slip stitch like the rest of my squares. Now here we are at the corner again because we're going backwards we're going against the stitches. This stitch here is the one that belongs to this bar. If you're going frontwards, this stitch here belongs to the chain because it's going away from the bar. See that? That's how you can get confused on corners. So this stitch is coming towards the bar. It belongs with it. 
So that's not part of the chain two space. Both of these are not going towards any bar. These are your two chains. So you want to slip stitch into one chain, chain two, slip stitch into the back of the other chain, and that's the stitch I started with. So I'm just going to come here and see that will be the back. Okay. Let's sneak down in here to finish my slip stitch. Okay. Now, I did that because you're going to get a tighter different looking, slightly different looking um, product when you do this. <coughs> Here's the fronts. This is also slip stitched in back. Okay, take the fronts like that. And you're going to go through these bottoms of these loops. I'm going to turn this around this way. See the blue better. Okay. So here's my chain two. Not going into a post, not going into a post, going into a post. I'll go on the outside of the chain and on this side it's the only time you got to mess with it going into a post not going into a post not going into a post so that's the one I want to match it to I want to go through both of them okay now Again, we're going outside to outside. And on the other one, you can't sew it without it showing. For some reason, it just doesn't work. Unless you want to knot each one like you would a, a darning stitch where you wrap the thread around and go through, wrap the thread around. This one is tight enough, I believe you can do. A sewing stitch on it, a whip stitch, because of the extreme way that they jet out over each other. So, the side, and then that side. Bottom of this one, bottom of that one. I'll do the rest of this off camera. Faster for me, better for you. Stick it right under my nose where I can see it.
there. Now see, that's a pretty scene. And that's a pretty scene. You know, I think I like that one better. Hmm. I just like the way it looks. But this is tight and elastic. See that? If you were just to pull the two pieces like that, like when you're putting it on or smoothing it over something or wrapping it around your legs, pop right back together again. So there you have your back slip stitch seam and your barred slip stitch seam. Low profile. Barred slip stitch one is a little more low pro profile than the um, full slip stitch one. But they're still both pretty, you know, pretty easy to get along with. This is just seems to be a little flatter the way it lays over. So here you have it. We have the Celtic circle, blanket squares, blanket tiles. We have them without the little goodies here. We have them with our little crosses. And this is our back slip stitch seam. We have them can have them in uh, like plain tone, two tone. And this is our barred slip stitch seam. And I don't know if you noticed when we were doing it, but I wanted to show you the difference in something. You see how these have the ridge that goes around here? all the way around. This is the tile that I had made a mistake in and instead of going into the back I just went into the seam. Now there's not that big amount of difference when you get to see the ridge and when it interrupts it. But I thought I'd let you see the difference since I did make a mistake on this one. See where it comes in and interrupts the seam? No big deal. Just wanted you to see that. Okay. I hope you enjoyed make, uh, being with me. I enjoyed making this for you. I get a real lot of uh, enjoyment in making stuff and making the videos to share. So let me know what you did. You can send me uh, pictures on my Facebook account. I have a link in my about on my channel. Let me know what you did, how you did, if you like it, if you don't like it, if you'd like more. Happy crocheting, guys. Bye-bye.